My name is Austin Herring, and I'm going to be going over interactive proof systems. So first, we're going to go over the basic concept. So the main idea here is that we're formalizing the interaction between two different parties. Each of the parties in this interaction are special Turing machines, a prover and a verifier. And like a standard Turing machine, they're trying to determine the membership of a particular string in their language. The first machine, the prover, uh, what it's trying to do is convince the verifier of something it wants that verifier to think. And it might not be trustworthy in a sense that, it wants, that what it wants the verifier to think might not actually be true. So the verifier's job then is to actually verify that this proof is correct. So this kind of interaction is often useful in zero knowledge proofs, where the prover wants to convince the verifier of something without actually reeling all of its knowledge, just some of it. So the special Turing machine I was just talking about is the interactive Turing machine, or ITM. So this Turing machine is basically a standard Turing machine, but with a few extra tapes. The first tape is an input tape, which is read-only. The second tape is a random tape. Um, so the, this tape contains a random string of bits, each of which was decided by a fair coin toss. So this is just a string of bits. Um, and it's read-only. The next tape is a work tape on which the machine can perform any kind of computation at once, and it can read and write on this tape. The next tape is the incoming communication tape from which it can only read. It also has an outgoing communication tape on which it can only write. And finally, uh, an output tape on which it writes its final output. So before we go over actual interactive proof systems, we're going to talk about interactive protocols, which are a little bit more general than the stricter interactive proof systems. So in these protocols, we have an ordered pair of these interactive Turing machines called A and B. So A and B share their input tape, and on this input tape is written the string that they want to uh, determine membership and the language of. So the machines are hooked up in such a way that A's write-only communication tape is B's read-only communication tape and vice versa. So everything that A writes out, B reads in. Everything that B writes out, A reads in. So this kind of makes sense intuitively in that the machines are kind of talking back and forth to one another. So in the protocol, the computation kind of, perform, uh, kind of proceeds in stages. And in each stage, uh, one machine actually performs computation while the other sits idle. And within a stage, uh, one machine does its internal computation, doing whatever it wants to compute uh, before it decides what to do next. And what it can decide to do is one of the three following things. The first thing it can do is just terminate the protocol and decide not to perform any more computation and not write anything on its communication tape. The second thing it can do is write on the communication tape, giving a message for the other machine, go idle, and then let the other, other machine continue its computation. Finally, if the machine is B and only B, like a standard Turing machine, it can accept or reject the input string as a member, as a member of the language. Uh, also note that B is the first machine to compute uh, in stage one. So also note that A is computationally unbounded. It can use as, as many resource, resources as it wants and take as much time as it wants. But we limit B to operating at polynomial time in regards to the input string. Uh, in other words, the sum of all its stages must be a polynomial, uh, polynomial computation of the input string. So after you're covering interactive protocols, we can now go into actual interactive proof systems. So imagine that we have an interactive protocol, P and V, for the prover and the verifier. This protocol is an interactive proof system for the language L if, for every st uh, string x that's actually in the language, such that x is sufficiently large, the probability that V actually accepts this string into the language is greater than 2 thirds. And for every string x not in the language, such that x is sufficiently large, the probability that V accepts this string in the language is less than 1 third. So the first condition is the uh, logical idea of completeness. We accept strings in L with high probability. Intuitively, we have a good chance of being right about the strings that actually are in the language. We do accept strings in the language. The second condition is the logical idea of soundness. We accept strings not in L with low probability, and intuitively, we have a good chance of being right about strings not in the language. Uh, strings not in the language are not accepted. So next, we're kind of going to go over a more a kind of general example uh, of NP problems. So it turns out that all problems in NP have interactive proof systems. So if you recall, one definition of languages in NP is that they are verifiable in polynomial time using a certificate of the solution. So we can kind of build up a proof system P, V around these certificates. So what happens is in stage one, uh, V, which is acting as uh, B in the original protocol, just requ re uh, requests the uh, certificate. Then, in stage two, P uses unbounded computation time and resources to compute the answer to, to the problem 
and provide the certificate back to V. Finally, in stage 3, V just performs the polynomial time verification we know must exist because the problem is an MP. So this, you, you'll note that this must uh, ascertain the membership of any string in the language which is an MP. We can also note that there's actually no use of the random input string in this protocol, particularly in V. Um, it's interesting to note that actually if uh, interactive proof systems did not have this random tape, this class of languages recognized by them, which we can denote as IP, would actually equal the class of languages uh, NP. So if there is no randomness in this system, NP equals IP. But it turns out that with the randomness, IP is a little bit more general and can actually recognize the class of languages which are recognizable in polynomial space, P space. So now we're kind of going to go over a more specific example, uh, which is also in the class IP. Uh, graph three coloring with commitments. So the actual problem here is we're given a graph uh, consisting of a node set, node set and an edge set and we want to ask is there a three coloring such that no adjacent nodes are the same color? So this can actually be done with a zero knowledge proof where the prover doesn't reveal everything it knows to the verifier. So just note in the following I'm going to use the letter M to denote the size of the edge set. So we develop our proof system PV. So P wants to convince V there's a valid three coloring which it knows exists if there is one without providing the actual coloring that allows this. So the computation kind of proceeds in multiple rounds. What happens in each round is that first, P picks a random new coloring. It can't keep on reusing the same coloring because the way V operates, it could just instead slowly reveal every color in the graph, which would re reveal uh, which we, the, the knowledge we don't want to give V. So after picking a coloring, P commits to this coloring and sends this securely as commitments to V. It has to be so secure so that V cannot just look at the graph and decide whether it's a val valid three coloring or not. So the idea of commitments is that P kind of locks up the colorings and sends them to V, and then later V can unlock them, but once V has them, P cannot change the contents of those locked boxes. So once V has the commitments, what it does is it randomly chooses an edge and asks P to reveal the nodes on each end. Once P does this, V just confirms that the nodes are actually of different colors. If they're the same, we know this graph cannot have a valid three coloring, so V just enters a reject state and says, no, this graph does not have a valid three coloring. So we repeat this for M squared rounds. Every time we repeat this, we're kind of building up our confidence that this graph does have a valid three coloring. This is because uh, with every repeated time we do this, we do not find an edge with two adjacent nodes of the same color. So eventually, if we repeat for n squared rounds, we're fairly confident that this graph has a valid three coloring and we can accept. We'll formalize this idea in, a, in just a little bit. So this is kind of just a graphical representation of every round. So what happens first is that V decides on its coloring and sends these as commitments to V. So you can just imagine these as the locked boxes I kind of mentioned before. So once V has these commitments as locked boxes, it just chooses an edge uh, randomly represented by AB and asks P to reveal it. So P just provides the keys to these two locked boxes denoted here by KA and KB. So once V receives these keys, it can unlock the boxes and compare the colors. If they're the same, it can reject. If not, it can just request a new color. So this can kind of repeat over and over again for those n squared rounds as V builds this confidence that this, gra that this graph does have a valid free coloring. So for this to be an inter interactive proof system, we have to show a couple things. First, we must show that this satisfies completeness and soundness. So for completeness, we have to show that for every graph that does have a valid three coloring, we accept it with probability greater than two thirds. So if G is three colorable, that means that V will never see adjacent nodes with matching colors. If you recall, the only way that we can ever reject a graph is if we do see adjacent nodes, adjacent nodes with, it, with the same color. Therefore, V will never reject and accepts all strings in the language with probability 1, which is greater than 2 thirds. For soundness, this means we must accept graphs with, uh, without valid three colorings with probability less than 1 third. So note that in the worst case, only one edge in the graph will have an invalid coloring. And V picks this edge with probability 1 over M because it uniformly picks from the available edges. So this means in any given round, V has a 1 minus 1 over M chance of being fooled by the prover. And after m squared rounds, it has a 1 minus 1 over m to the m squared, uh, which is approximately e to the negative m chance of being fooled every round. So notice this is, that this is negligible as m grows. So as m grows, this must be less than 1 third. 
Finally, note the V must also run in polynomial time. This must be satisfied for the, for the scheme to even be an interactive protocol, let alone an interactive proof system. So note that V only performs a constant amount of work each round. He said all it has to do is randomly choose an edge, send this to P, and then compare the two nodes that are revealed. This is obviously constant. And then it only operates these rounds m squared times. Therefore, in total, the running time is big of m squared, which is obviously polynomial. Therefore, because we set aside th these conditions, this scheme must be an interactive proof system for graph 3 coloring with commitments. So I hope this acted as a good example of an interactive proof system for you. I hope you kind of came to understand these systems a little bit better. Thank you.